Okay, the fiberglassing is done on the filter. It's quite a messy job yesterday and I apologize that I didn't record it while I was doing it. But because of the, the resin going off that quick and basically time is off of the essence, I decided not to stop for filming. So yeah, I just sanded it all down, vacuumed everything, wiped it, and now it's time for the top coat. Quick little update. I uh, finished the top coating. So I'm pretty happy with it. Um, yeah, it's white, but I thought I'd you know, just keep it white as I had in the other filter and save 120 bucks on getting it black tinted. So I didn't see, don't see the value in the filter having a black tinted. There's anyway no light coming in, there's no allergy growing and it makes makes it easier for me to see how much dirt is on the, on the in the sediment chambers. Okay. So now a few uh, a few more uh, silicon around the the pipes and putting the diverting wall in. Well, we're back. As you can see, I got the diverting walls in. If you you might ask why I put it on top of the fiberglass. Um, yeah, I'm not, I wasn't really game enough to fiberglass in that narrow gap there, so I just decided to put the walls in and then paint them. That should work as well. Um, yeah, now it's all ready for the pipe work. I'm starting today doing the pipe work for the returns and the skimmers. The first fittings I have in there, the rest. I got in the shed. Hopefully I have everything to complete this task today as well putting preparing the, the brushes, brush curtains um, and the, the chambers, the diverting chambers for the moving bed, the static media and the air chamber. So let's see. How are we going today? Uh, welcome back. Um, yeah, I couldn't sleep so I got up tonight and I uh, decided to prep the dividing walls for the moving bed chambers and the static chamber and uh, of course and the, the air chamber. So there are three, three of these Dividing, wall, dividing walls and um, yeah first I'll have to get them all straight and then make it put a grid on it and after that I will drill holes through the entire plate um, so that the water can free flow through it it will be quite a tedious job. Um, yeah, I'm not very keen on doing it, but it needs to be done. So we just what I want to do now, just make it grit over it. That non-permanent marker. bore you with doing this entire thing so see you in the next step okay the grid is finished and um, now to the next fun part drilling these the 100 holes so I have more than 100 holes off but yeah let's have fun Uh, it's just 
double check with one of these K Plus medias. Pretty good. Will not go through it. That was my biggest fear that these could go through. In a previous little project I did, they actually went through the hole I made and it was just that size. Okay, let's keep going. Okay, I'll come back when I finish this. It'll take me quite a bit of time. And let's see how many battery charging I need to get through all these holes. Okay, I'm back. The last row of holes I've been, I have to do. In total, this will be, I calculated in between charges, 846 holes. So it took me about an hour and a half to drill them. A very tedious job. And I'll try and do this again. Okay, that was the last hole, and still one bar left on the charge. So basically, one and a half charges. Not too bad. restrict the flow through the filter. So before I put the K plus media in, that's about 150 liter, I will give it a go 
without any mania and say if it restricts the flow great. if not I'm very, I will be very happy with this even though it was a lot of work and I hope I don't have to do it again because it's not my kind of job it's pretty tedious I, I, I got up this morning at, two, at one o'clock because I couldn't sleep, I started it and halfway through I went back to bed and now I just finished it. The, yeah. So, cross your fingers for me that this will work. I will let you know. Thanks. Yeah, just one little thing when I did the, the fiberglass and the top coating of the filter. And what I didn't mention is the walls I fiberglassed with two layers of 450 gem chop matting and the bottom got three layers. So yeah, I wanted to have the bottom really strong because of that diverting wall I placed in the middle. And in the top coating I did just two coats. I went really thoroughly over and checked for every little pinhole because of from past experience I had. Uh, so yeah, I hope that will be all good and sealed so I don't have any water leaks. Well, usually I always have some kind of water leaks. I'm not really lucky when it's coming to sealing water in um, yeah, ponds, my filters anything every time i have to go and look for those tiny little leaks I, I i had when i did this pond last year one really stupid thing i did was uh, i used the best epdm liner, liner that's out there i did everything what they recommended with the bottom drains, the silicon, everything. I, I went by almost by the book, and then when I had it all finished and I put the water in, it looked all good till the next day I got there and suddenly I was missing what five centimeter of water in just a short 10 hour gap, you know. From late afternoon till the morning i just missing i was devastated and then i had to go back to work and i could not figure it out so i had the trickle in running constantly to a certain level as all the top up i was put it to a certain level and when i came back after my stint at work and i saw how deep the level was gone because I, I, I told my wife two days before just to turn the trickle in off so I can see where the water will level out so when I came back I could see it where it leveled out and I thought I missed something on the on the returns because I, I thought one of the returns might have not been sealed enough so I'll, I'll put two cartridges off pond silicon on it fill it back up just to see the next day again the water gone so I could not figure it out for probably two days I went and checked everything and I could not believe what was going on till at one yeah one night when I was trying to fall asleep I had this light bulb moment where I could thought, hang on, I think I know where the mistake is. So in one of the corners of the pond, I, when I did all the coping and the brick laying, I didn't do the fold correctly. So I smashed all the coping on the, on the stones out again to check it. And yes, my, my theory I had, was correct the fold I did was the wrong way so basically all the water was 
was going was drawing out through that fold like uh, what do they call it a caterpillar um reaction so it's just like it's it's just drawing constantly the water out to the certain level so yeah as soon as i fixed that it was all sealed that was great but yeah this is my luck with ponds and everything when i have to seal any any water it's just, it's it's a nightmare i don't know this must be my my luck i mean usually i'm i'm a pretty happy guy and um i do a lot of things uh you know what do they call it a, a, a jack of all trades but a master of none so i i give everything a go it's like with the fiberglassing and the top coating i give everything a go and i've done it now a couple of times and it's it's not rocket science it just to, to take your time and yeah sometimes it works and sometimes you yeah have a little problem but yeah it's all fixable so so that's why i choose the thick matting two layers on the walls three layers on the bottom and two um layers of top coat i'm pretty confident about that it, it will be sealed uh, and then one thing I think it didn't come over in the when I was explaining it why I did it and why top coating. It sounded like it was only twenty bucks more expensive. It, it was what I was saying is it was one hundred twenty dollar more expensive to get it in black or any other color than white, and that's why I choose to go with white again because I thought one hundred twenty bucks I can invest somewhere else better than in a filter that you only see when you clean it and there, there will never be any algae growth in it. Well, it might get a bit dirty, but it's, I don't think it's that big of a deal. So yeah, that's the reason why I went for white, $120. It's quite quite a bit of money just to put a bit black tint in, but everyone to their own. I mean, that's my personal choice, who knows? Some other people might um, disagree with me. Okay, that was just a little explanation to how I did the fiberglass and top coating and why I did it in white. Thanks for listening and watching. And see you next time. Oh yeah, and one last thing I want to just quick little show you. There's um, our paddocks. We have a five acre property here. Uh, down south western australia it's starting to green all up where we're getting no rain so yeah just a little view of that another day i will make a walk through and show you what the little dams and the creek we have down there okay